Hi, welcome back to a learning of video game art again. Today, I would like to share with you the workflow for how to set up an image reference plane in 3D space. For your information, there are many ways to set up image plane for 3D modeling. In fact, there might be far too many. For instance, by simply entering these keywords in the YouTube search box, you shall see there are more than 15,000 of videos which are dedicated to this topic alone. Actually, among all these brilliance of methods, you only need to focus on these three simple steps. And to demonstrate these proposed working steps, I will make use of this available template reference of Sackboy from Little Big Planet. As a start, we are going to modify this existing image template with a transparent background. To do so, first let's duplicate this background layer and rename it. Next, I'm going to use the marquee tool and the fill color function to flush off these graphical elements. To flood the selected area with the foreground color of white, just hit the shortcut key of alternate backspace. Once done, just hit Ctrl D to discharge our selection. Next, let's activate the magic wand and increase its tolerance to the value of 32. Then, simply click on the bodily part of the white space. And it is common to see some misses when using a tool like magic wand. To patch these miss selected pixels, you can always use the marquee tool by holding down the shift key for adding back these areas into our initial selection. Next, we are going to erase the selected white space with the delete key. And to detect whether we had cleanly removed the unwanted area, there is a little trick that I like to use, the layer style of stroke. By having the stroke effects on, you will realize that there are some pixels which we had unknowingly missed. To remove these pixels, you can use an erase tool to manually rub them off. However, this approach can be quite time consuming. You can consider to do this. Create a whole new empty layer and stack it underneath the primary layer. Then, select both of these layers and merge them with the shortcut key of Ctrl E. The purpose for doing so is that we want to permanently write the stroke effect down as a pixel. Next, let's call up the function of the color range and place our cursor onto one of these blackish dots. In your own practice, you might want to reduce the fuzziness to a suitable range then setting it to its maximum value. Then hit the delete key for several times and everything should be just nice and cleaned. Next, we are going to save our reference image into a square resolution. It is always a good practice to treat images that design for real-time rendering to be in the powers of two. But in our context, it is not about memory optimizations, but rather to reduce the unnecessary UV distortions when mapping the images onto a polygonal plane. In this demo, I opened a new Photoshop document with a pixel resolution of 1024 by 1024. Now let's go back to the previous document, press Ctrl A to select everything, then followed by hitting the Ctrl C to copy the image. In the new document, simply press Ctrl V to paste it onto the canvas. Then save this document in the format of PNG before we move on to Maya. In Maya, let's create a square polygonal plane and set it to the center of the viewport. Next, turn on the shaded display and wireframe. You might want to turn on the texture display in the same time. Next, let's change our viewport to the top view. With the new polygonal plane in selection, Hold down your right mouse button 
and choose to assign a new Lambert materials. Do rename the Lambert materials before you connect its color slot with the reference image that we had processed just now. Okay, the transparency of our image plane did turn out as what we had anticipated. It is clean and good for the edge loop modeling workflow at a later stage. Next, we are going to split the reference plane into a two separate parts with the insert edge loop tool. Do insert two edges for the top and the bottom of the image plane. The placement of these two new edges need not to be that precise. Next, select these two faces and delete them away. Now let's engage this insert edge loop tool again by double clicking it here. Do change its two setting to use the equal multiplier. And we are going to use the tool to split the image plane into half. In the following step, I'm going to change the peer point of this image plane by snapping it to this vertex. And before we extract the image plane, let's turn on the snap to grid function and move it to the origin. Turn off the snap to grid function, let's return to the perspective viewport. Activate the rotation tool and rotate along the x axis to 90 degrees. Only now, I will select this face and extract it as separate mesh. For the ease of arranging the image planes, let's switch the viewport to the front view and reset its pivot point to the center. Next, let's align these two image planes to the center of the grid. In the perspective view, do rotate the side reference plane to 90 degrees of the Z axis. For this side reference plane, you might want to realign it again from the side viewport. This is to ensure the center of gravity of set boys are well placed within the 3D viewport. Next, let's head back to the perspective viewport and give these two image planes a name. Then assign these two image planes into a new layer. Set it to the reference mode so that you won't keep selecting it during the modeling stage. And we are done for setting up the image plane. In this demonstration, I use the intersect approach for crossing the reference planes together. Alternately, you can choose to use the box alignment method should you find that it is more convenient to your own modeling workflow. But for character modeling, I prefer to use this intersect approach. This is because it would be more convenient when we want to cross-checking with our model with the image reference plane. Lastly, I would like to share with you a little tips for setting up a separate transparency controller for our work-in-progress model. And there's a reason why I choose to do so. 
First, let me create a temporary block to demonstrate that. Okay, in a lot of time, when you are doing the actual modeling process, you will find that your work in progress model is constantly blocking your view for seeing the image plane properly. And of course, the Maya viewport did provide us a nice X-ray mode to work with. However, the X-ray mode would render all the objects in the viewport to semi-transparent. And this would create unnecessary clutters to our eye. This is simply not efficient at all if I still want to observe and reference the image plane clearly. Thus, in such a catch-22 situations, I would strongly encourage you to assign a whole new shading material to your work-in-progress model. And it can be a simple blend shader that mimics the material of oily clay. Through a new shader, you can get to adjust the transparency level of your mesh freely without interrupting the default opacity of your image plane like what the X-ray mode does. However, this solution is still far from efficient as it would be quite troublesome as to adjust the transparency of the mesh, we have to jump in and out between the attribute editor. This could be quite annoying when your shader tab is being pushed behind to a huge power of construction history during modeling. To solve this, let's create a new locator and place it to the side of the image plane. The sizing of the locator is not important as we will need to freeze its transformation after placing it to the side. Do rename the locator with an identical naming convention. And with the locator still in selection, let's call up the connection editor. Do make sure the locator is being loaded on the left side. Then do call up the hypershade window to select the blend shader that we had created earlier and load it to the right side of our connection editor. Do look out for the properties of translate for the locator while searching for the transparency attribute of the blend shader here. Now we are going to connect the translate Y of the locator with the blend shader's transparency attribute. Then close the editor. Now, by leveling the translate Y of this locator, we can now alter the transparency of the mesh easily. This would save us a lot of time and unnecessary GPU draw core for expanding and collapsing the attribute editor. With such image plane setup, you will become more efficient for getting to focus on the modern tasks. And that's all for this session. I hope you will find this method to be useful when modeling a character. And I would love to hear from you should you ever come out a more fine-tuned approach to improve the efficiency of this demonstrated method. Thank you.